An important part of process analysis is the measurement of the work to be performed in a process. Information such as the number of seconds taken to carry out each step or the number of repetitions that can be performed per hour, etc., are important pieces of information that need to be a part of the process documentation. More importantly, these data are very relevant when we are thinking about improving the process. One way to measure work is to simply take a stopwatch and time an activity over several iterations. This method is called time study. Of course, we need to be timing iterations that are representative of the activity in general, as determined by a trained analyst. The time standard that we develop is particularly useful to analyze linear flow processes. The time standard can also be used to estimate the labor hours it will take to complete a customer order, set the price we should charge our customer, forecast the time required to complete the order, etc. Let us take a look at this example. Here is an activity that we studied for 40 iterations. To calculate a time standard for this activity, we first average all our observations. We are told that the employee we observed has a 95% performance rating. So, if a 95% employee took this many seconds, an average employee, that is a 100% employee, will take less time than that. We can get an average employee's time by taking 95% of the observed employee's time, which we call as the normal time. Any employee performing the above activity needs breaks every once in a while. As well, the employee's speed is likely to be affected by fatigue and other such factors. To set a time standard for this activity, we need to make allowance for these factors. We are told that allowances are 15% of the normal time. Adding this 15% brings our time standard to 115% of the normal time. Notice that we are trying to maintain a high level of detail in terms of the number of decimal points. Let us say we are trying to estimate the time it will take to produce 5,000 widgets. Any rounding error in the time standard for a single iteration will be multiplied 5,000 times. Now suppose we have a flexible flow process and are doing different things for different customers. Even though the orders are different from day to day, the orders can be broken up into elements that are pretty standard. For each of these elements, we can maintain a database of time standards. Whenever an order comes in, we can examine the different elements it is made up of, look up our database, and set a time standard. This method is called the Elemental Standard Data Approach. Another method of setting a time standard without taking out a stopwatch every time is by using a predetermined data approach. Like a time study, this method is also useful for a linear flow process. Here, rather than timing the process steps, we break up the steps into micro-level activities. For each of these micro-motions, we refer to standard tables to estimate the time taken. I walk three feet. There's a standard for that. It takes so many microseconds. I reach out two feet. There's a standard for that. It takes so many microseconds. I pick up a five pound weight. There's a standard for that. It takes so many microseconds. And so on. I simply add up the time taken for all the micro motions in my process. Another kind of work measurement applies to a situation where an employee is engaged in a variety of activities throughout the workday. Consider an employee working at a retail store where customers expect a lot of hand holding and each customer has widely varying needs. It does not make sense to take a stopwatch and measure the time taken to serve an average customer. At times during the day, there are no customers present. At those times, the employee is asked to restock the shelves, reshelve the strewn items, do some work in the back, etc., until the next customer shows up. Although we don't want to set a time standard for these activities, we want to measure what proportion of the employee's time is spent on what kind of activity. For that, we use a work sampling study. 
Consider the example of our store employee. We take random observations over a period of time. Even the number of observations on each day is randomized. Using the information we have collected, we can determine that about 30% of the employee's time is spent attending to customers. About 29% restocking shelves. About 20% reshelving strewn items. And about 21% is idle time. Whenever we are measuring work or trying to set a time standard, we need to take into account the fact that, with repetition, people and processes get better at doing things. This is called the learning effect or the experience effect. Generally speaking, the more complex the activity, the greater the opportunity for learning and improvement. With a less complex activity, although the learning rate might not be high, the number of iterations is likely to be high, such as with a line flow situation. Either way, it becomes important to correctly estimate the learning rate. Say our company is bidding on an order of 50 airplanes for an airline. Given the complexity of the process, we can expect a significant learning effect. If we bid based on the labor hours it took for our prototype, our bid will come in extremely high. On the other hand, if we estimate the learning effect very aggressively, we will end up with a whopping loss. Similarly, suppose our company is introducing a new car model. We anticipate that we will sell 10,000 units of this model over the coming year. We will need to determine our pricing based not on the first several production runs, but based on an estimate of the long-term process costs. Our first several production runs are essentially going to sell at below cost. Consider this example. The roofing contractor estimates that the first roof will take 40 hours. Given a 95% learning rate, we can estimate that the second roof will take 40 hours times 95% or 38 hours. The learning effect works like this. Every time the cumulative number of iterations doubles, we can multiply the time estimate by 95%. Therefore, our fourth roof will take 95% of 38 hours, or 36.1 hours. Continuing in this manner, we can estimate that the eighth roof will take 95% of 36.1 hours, or 34.3 hours. The 16th roof will take 32.58 hours. The 32nd roof will take 30.95 hours. And the 64th roof will take 29.4 hours. To estimate the time taken for the third roof, the fifth roof, etc., as well as the total time for a particular number of roofs, such as all 100 roofs, there are standard tables available for different learning rates that we can use.